What's going on friends? Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to add in the ever so popular crescent moon and teal stars into any of your images here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brendan from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at burnwells. Before I get started, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday, so if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'd also quickly like to let you know that all the images that I'm using in this tutorial, I've included a download link down in the description below, so if you're wanting to follow along and create this exact image with me, you are more than welcome to. I'm sure many of you guys have seen this sort of image on Instagram, and I've actually gotten quite a few requests to show how to make images like this. So that being said, this there's pretty much three things that make up these images. We have our base photo, and then we have our stars, then we have our crescent moon. There's really only three elements to these images. So the image that I'm going to be using as my base is going to be this cave. And now I'm going to be adding the stars and the moon just about here. And then so I also have my star photo and my moon. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to cut out this area. So we pretty much just want to get rid of the sky. So since I pretty much just want to select out this blue area, the nice thing for us is that since this is pretty much all one color, there's not really any different shades of blue, our magic wand tool will select all that for us. So we can select our magic wand tool. If you don't see it, just hold and then go down to magic wand tool. And then all you have to do is click on the color. So like the blue. And now you'll see we get all our marching ants around and it pretty much got a perfect selection for me. So if it didn't get quite a perfect selection, say there's it's missing a little bit, you can just go up to select and then down to similar. And when you click that, it just readjusts the selection. So anything that is similar to this blue, it will also select for you. So now once you have your selection, just click your layer mask icon and now we'll have our sky. And of course we'll press command I to invert our layer mask and now we are seeing our cave. So next thing is we're going to go grab our stars. So we'll go over to our stars, grab our move tool by pressing V, and then we'll just click and drag into our cave. Now, of course, we want to put it behind our cave, and I'm just going to scale it up, and then place the, I'm going to place the gradient. So as you see, there's a bit of a gradient here. I'm going to make sure that the gradient is somewhere down in this corner, because obviously the horizon is going to be a little brighter than the upper bit. So because this photo already has a gradient, it just saves us a little bit of time and you don't have to add one later. Now you'll see that there's all this sort of white, these white lines around our selection or around our cave. What that's called is fringing and all it is is just a little bit of leftovers from what we just cut out. So we can just double click this box, click decontaminate colors, and then we can just click OK. So as you see, as you can see, it just did a little bit to help us but didn't quite do the full job. So I'm just going to delete my old one. And so now I just have a single cave and I'm just going to create a new layer, clip it to my cave to copy. And I am just going to grab my clone stamp tool by pressing S. And since it's clipped, my sample setting is current and below. So it's, it's going to be only affecting this layer and my cave. And now I'm going to just make a small brush and I'm just going to alt click to sample. And now I'm just going to drag around the edge of the cave. I'm just going to drag around the edge of the cave to pretty much clone stamp out all of that fringing that our selected mask could not get rid of for us. So this is pretty pretty easy and quick to do. And so I'm just going to go through really fast and I'll join you guys in just a minute. Alright, great. So now all my fringing is gone and now I can move on. So next thing I'm going to do is grab my, go over to my moon, press my move tool again by pressing V. And I'm just going to drag and drop into my cave and I'm just going to go up to my blending mode and I'm just going to set it to screen. So all that does is gets rid of all the black for us. We don't have to do any cutting out. Now I'm going to drag it behind my cave to copy because say I want to put it over here. It is now in my sky and it's not going to overlap with my cave at all. So I'm just going to first rename this to moon and then I'm going to rename my layer one to stars. So with my moon, I'm just going to, with my move tool, I'm just going to sort of position it how I'm wanting, maybe something like this, and maybe I'll shrink it down just a little. And 
Hmm. So there's the orientation doesn't really matter, but it's kind of just up to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna just leave it like that for now. Maybe bring it up just a just a hair. Okay. Cool. So now I have my moon in there. Next thing is I want to make my moon a little bit brighter. So I'm just gonna grab my brightness layer adjustment. I'm gonna clip it to my moon, and now I'm just going to make it a little bit brighter. So it's up to you. Like some people on Instagram, when they do this, they just like to make their moon completely bright or completely white. And I, on the other hand, I kind of like it to be somewhere in the middle. I'm going to create a new layer, make sure white is selected, and I'm going to grab my brush tool. And I'm going to make sure I'm using a soft brush. So I'm just going to enlarge my brush and I'm just going to click right on my moon. Maybe, maybe make it a little bit smaller, something like that. Now I'm just going to press V and I'm just going to I'm just going to stretch out this brush spot that I just put on and I'm just going to position it so it sort of fits with the shape of the moon like that. Now I'm just going to set the layer mode of that to soft light and now I can just play with the fill until it just sort of gives a little bit of a glow to that moon. So I'm putting my fill at 40 47% but that's just up to you. Now I'm just going to rename this layer to moon glow and now I'm just gonna hold shift select all of them press command G and now group them all and I'm just going to rename it to moon great so now all those layers involving the moon are all in one little group next I want to make my stars a little bit more teal looking so I'm just gonna grab my hue saturation layer clip it to my stars and since it's only affecting my stars, I can just use my master slider. So I'm just going to slide around and find the color that I want. So if you guys are wanting like a yellow sky, you do you. You pick whatever color you want. But in this case, I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick sort of a teal. So something something in here, and then I'll bring up the saturation a little bit as well. So that looks good to me. So as you see, if I turn it on off, the color difference that it made. Next is with my cave, I'm going to first I'm going to just rename this to clone. Since I want that my cave to be not so red but sort of more of an orange, I'm also going to do the same thing. Grab my hue saturation, clip it to my cave, and I'm just going to play around with the slider until I find find an area that I like a little bit better. So maybe maybe something like this and then play with the saturation so it fits my needs a little better. And that looks pretty good to me. So if I turn it on and off, again, you can see the difference that it made. This is totally personal preference, so you guys do your thing. As you might have noticed, the cave sort of has a faded look, and I don't really like that very much. So what I'm going to do is to sort of reverse that is I'm just going to grab my exposure adjustment layer, again, clip it to my cave, and I'm just going to get, with my offset slider, I'm just going to drag it back just a little. So now it just sort of takes down that fade just a little bit. All right, now this is like pretty much done, but the only thing is that I kind of find this like a little bit boring, so there's not really a whole lot going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some clouds in the sky. So I'm gonna create a new layer, and then I'm gonna go to my brush tool, and I already have a clouds brush downloaded into my all my brush selections here. I'll leave a link down below as well if you want to download these the same cloud brush pack. I'm just going to probably pick two different clouds. So this is the first one I'm going to select and I'm going to make it, since clouds at night aren't white, they're sort of like a gray, I'm going to go sort of somewhere in the middle here. I'm just going to click once and then maybe make it a little bit smaller, put a smaller one down here. And then now I'm going to change up my cloud and I'm maybe going to make it a little whiter as well. Since these ones are going to be closer to the moon, I'm going to make them a little brighter. So that one looks good there. Maybe add something there and then darken it up a bit again and add something here and here. All right, great. So now obviously this looks like poop because <laughs> it's not even, it's, it doesn't make any sense, but first I'm just gonna rename this to clouds and then I'm just gonna drag it back behind my cave and behind my moon. So now it will fit a little bit better. So if this is what you guys are wanting, that's totally fine. But the one thing about these clouds is I find that they sometimes don't really look very realistic, but 
that's that's totally okay because in this case if you were shooting at night and you wanted the stars and things like that maybe it's really windy so doing a long exposure to capture the stars there might be some blur in the clouds so what we can do to do that is we can go filter blur motion blur and so I'm just gonna set my angle to zero so they go straight across my sky and then now you can just sort of play around with the blur that you're wanting and so I'm kinda gonna go kind of like something like that maybe it's super windy outside and now I'm just gonna add a layer mask grab my brush tool change it to a soft brush and I'm just gonna kinda go through and mask out some of the clouds because maybe that's kind of a little bit too much for me so something something like this works pretty nicely for me and that is it that is how you add the classic crescent moon and stars to your images just like you see on instagram so if you found this tutorial helpful i would love if you hit that like button and maybe even considered subscribing i make new photoshop tutorials every single wednesday Anyways, that is all I have for you guys for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something as well. If you did decide to create this image, I'd love to see how your image turned out. So if you upload it to Instagram, make sure to tag me, at Burnwells. I would love to see it. Again, my name's Brendan from Outbound Media, and I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.